talk is about a song about the, the fear of people going through life knowing that they're going to die. People are always afraid of dying. They got to take this and that because they, you know, you're going to get cancer, so you can't take this, you can't take that. It's just the fear of dying. I think I can, I'm right when I say that Wolf, Wolf and I do the, the lyrics. Either I write the lyrics or he writes the lyrics to a song. Like in the beginning, Wolf had a lot of songs. I had songs. And uh, we molded them together with the band. But now that the band's been together for a while, it's, uh, I've used up any old songs I had. Anything I have now has to come fresh now. It has to come new. All the old stuff is out of the bag. And uh, like you said, the group is writing more as a unit now. Um, Lyrically, it usually usually him and I will come up with lyrics. But uh, when he was talking about the five different personalities, he was right there where it's it's helped in our writing, and hopefully maybe it's helping with our our originality because, like he said, he's day and I'm night. He is sort of like East LA, Coast West Coast. L.A. New York. He, yeah, exactly. And at first it was it was kind of a problem because he hated everything I I would listen to, and I hated everything that he would listen to. And these guys, <laughs> and these guys would have to sit back and listen to us argue, right? But now, but now we're starting to be able to give and take a little more. And because of that, I think since we didn't break up over something like that, we stuck it out. I think it's helped because now we've come to a happy medium, and it's sort of down the middle. Have there been any major drawbacks? It depends who, again, who you're talking to in the audience. There's people who look up and admire a band who is becoming a you know fairly successful even in their hometown and then there's people who hate you for it and you have to go through the sellout syndrome sellout syndrome please explain sellout sellout syndrome to me is when you start to make money at something or you start to get recognition a lot of people dump you right there um why would they dump you i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's uh because uh, then you're just in it for the money you're just in it uh to uh, yeah, you're not to agree. you know you don't care about your music anymore you know that's the, the opinion you get from some people if you start to become successful I get it a lot um, people put you in a category and the minute you start to go out of their category what they think is good then then you're then you're the opposite then you're bad you know the minute you start to stray out of their what they consider is the thing has that limited some of your concerts or that you know you can't play in certain air er to certain crowds um not really uh well there, there's certain crowds that that we couldn't play to but then again we did we try to keep the venues where anybody can come and if they don't want to come they don't have to come you know we're not trying to make enemies and we're not trying to force friends we're just trying to do do music write songs that we like sell records make a living off of it. I don't think there's anything wrong with making a living off of it. You consider yourselves a full-time band? We're like full-time right here. We're not full-time as money-wise yet. So you still have to find jobs? To yeah, we're all working. So there are some of you are working. Are any of you going to school? No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> no, there's uh, some of the... Jeff isn't working or Jeff is just in the band, that's it. He uh, doesn't have a day job. Um, up until about maybe the last two months ago, I was working a full day job, which has now been cut down to... Oh, I'm a sheet metal worker at uh, the University of Alberta. And, uh, well, that's pretty physical work, a lot of it. And being a guitar player and working with metal is <laughs> hamburger hands. It's, it's not easy. And again, do you? feel the pressures of almost two jobs. You got that right. How do you cope with it? Yeah. Uh, just if we're playing anywhere, you know, uh, say Thursday, Friday, and Saturday or something like that. Thursday night, you know, you work, you know, not to full capacity during the day, but just enough. And then same at night, because even your playing uh, is, uh, takes a lot out of you. So you got to sort of lay back so that you can get ready to go to work on on, uh, on the Friday. Um, I'm not sure of the exact time schedules of everybody, but to get up at 
7 or 8 a.m., go to work till 5, and be at a place in Calgary to play at 7, which means sometimes uh, if a person definitely has to work on a weekend. Well, personally, I can't speak for everyone, but I go to work, and I'm, I can't work to my capacity if I was just a full-time worker. If I was to go to work every day, I can't do my job very well because all I think about is what I did the last night playing or what I did the day before in the studio. And then when I come to the studio, I still feel a bit guilty because I'm not at my job. Dark room. Dark room is about a high fashion model. It's the glamour behind the the girl being a high fashion model, and and when she goes home at night and there's nobody there, she doesn't have friends. She's there all alone. So like she's in the day. Yeah. We go home. And all in our own little world. 
Some people don't have no one. Is it's all it's all glory, like in, in show business, music, fashion models. It's a lot of a lot of glory on up front, on in magazines, and you're you're on television. But then when you go home, no one. There's no one in your house that cares if you're a star or not. Um, as far as personal friends outside the band, I hardly ever get to see any of them. And uh, I go to my own home maybe at the most, maybe aside from sleeping six or seven hours in a night, I'm hardly ever at my own house. I'm always uh, either working or else I'm playing or else I'll be in the studio. Um, home life is just about nil. Cuts it's down on the family life. Social life zero. Does that bother you? At times. Mm. It can be quite tense. Not it's not only you that that has to go through it, but it's the people around you that are affected by it more. I find that it's not it's not me that is affected because I can I can handle and cope with it, but it's people around you that generally don't understand it. Tim, what about you? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> The band isn't really uh, that much of a party band, partially because of the job situation. You know, you can't go out and have a butterfly social life when you have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, you were asking about, our, when I mentioned plan of action, nobody in the group from day one has drawn any money whatsoever to put in their personal pockets. That's why we still have our day jobs. Uh, any equipment that we have, aside from personal band equipment, we don't own anything. We won't buy a PA and we won't buy lights. Everything we have is rented. Um, anybody we have help us set up, they're paid. Crew is paid. Everything is paid um, first hand. That's the first thing that comes out of any gig money. Um, we're also working in the studio. A lot of our money is going into the studio. Um, money goes into production as far as promotion, as far as posters. Um, there's agent fees, there's manager fees. Uh, luckily, we've got a manager who hasn't taken any of his fees yet, <laughs> but uh, not all of us can do it, so we have to rely on him. So it's more of it's a, it's a trusting thing, rather than uh, he's our manager and he books us like like other managers do. He's he's part of the group as an entity also, and uh, you, know, you have to trust the guy. You don't have to like him, but you have to trust him. <laughs> He's the guy who, who's in charge. Uh, if there's a problem or anything, that's the guy you talk to because he's he's basically the leader. As you know, instead of having somebody in the band being the leader, Rob's the guy who you go talk to. If he, there's a problem or if you want to know something, what's going to be coming up, or when you're in the studio or something, you talk to Rob. He's the guy who coordinates everything. If you want to fire someone, you don't have to say it to his face. Yeah. That's why you have a manager. The thing we have going with Rob is that um, he'll make suggestions and he'll present them to us. We'll get together and we'll discuss it and we'll say yay or nay against it or for it. Um, everything we do works like that, except Rob is the person that gets on the telephone and makes the contacts, or he's uh, the voice for us. Rather than somebody getting five phone numbers, calling and getting five different answers to a question, they can just call Rob and he'll give them one. And if he's not sure, he'll get back to them and talk to us first. It's just good to have a person that can go out and do talking for you. Because if five guys walk into a room and they all get tongue twisted, their, their opinions change in that period of five minutes, it can really confuse an issue. And it's not good business practice when you're trying to work out a deal with someone. It's better to just have two people sit down and discuss. It's just like having a lawyer in a way. You people are a little bit more successful than the majority of bands in the city. What type of benefits or drawbacks are there for being recognized? I get a lot of flack from... Well, a lot of ideas come into the band. A lot of people come up to you and say, well, that was really good. Uh, I like this song, I like that song. It influences you to try doing more of that type of thing. If it pleases people, well, that's good, that's what you're after. So if somebody comes up to you and says that, well, you're going to try to do more of it, just to get your idea across a little more.
different people comes together. Him, 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 and him. We all add something to it. I'm probably the most commercial out of them all, and the most hook orientated. So I'll, I'll do, take care of the hooks and that. Because I'm that's what I really go for. That's what I really like. This is he big, likes this something is else, <laughs> you know, and he likes something else. And that's how it's all together. Commercialism, commercialism is, is something that, uh, I don't know who came up with the word, commercialism is, is mass product sale. And if you can't sell to the masses, then uh, why is this sell to 10 people? You gotta make the mass happy. And that mass is black, white, red, whatever. There's more than just one, one category there. Who does the majority of the songwriting? Or we all do. Yeah. It's, Everyone... It used to be different, but now that we're heading in this, in a, this straight direction, we all know what we want now. So we are getting all close to knowing what we want. Instead of us all, like, I'll say, this is my song, let's do it. I'll say, this is my song, this is my idea, let's rearrange it, let's do this, and let's do this. Sometimes we all have our little parts. They have, they, the songs mean things. They're not just songs about uh, Joey falls in love. Some are. Uh, some are, but they, they really do mean things, you know. Like, there is a storyline behind each and every one of them. It's a, it's a song, every, every song doesn't, like a, it's not like every song is going towards one direction and and the end meaning of the song falls on one result. Every song has its own story. Every song might be about a situation. Every song might be about uh, a situation. 
They seem to have a dark image to it, though. It's, it's Where the darkies? <laughs> a dark image? Well, a dark view of, on light. They are depressing. The songs? Yeah, yeah. They are. They're depressing. Yeah, a lot of the songs are Some of them about suicide, you know, just your you average, think? everyday depression, stuff like that. Why would you write on such Because we're issues? really boring, sort of depressed. Guys. People we're depressed. depressed. <laughs> we're depressed. We, Not until I have a swimming pool, we'll be pretty depressed. <laughs> Ah, that would explain it. <laughs> Good evening. Everything to your satisfaction? Oh, yes. Well, uh, I don't like the chips. Sorry? The chips are awful. And they're just awful. I'm afraid he gets everything cooked the way he likes it at home. Ah, uh, does he? Does he? Yes, sir.